everybody. What's going on? Uh, as promised, I've got a special guest in here this evening. I've got Jason Dunn. And Jason is the Montgomery County Precinct 4 Justice of the Peace. And we're not going to be talking about anything judicial today. Jason also spent a little over 20 years in HPD, and some of that time was spent in the Narcotics Division and the Gang Division. So we're going to cover those aspects today. I think it's going to be a really interesting topic, and I think you guys are going to get a whole lot out of it. If you subscribe to the channel in the past month, hey, far out, I appreciate it. And Jason wants everybody that watches this thing to subscribe to us, too. That's so, right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So good afternoon, Jason. Uh, it took a while to get you in here, and I'm glad to have you here. So It did. Thanks for uh, having me. Yeah, You're welcome. No problem. And of course, I got Mark Hogan here on my left. And, yes, sir. And he's going to be co-hosting again, and, and we're just going to we're going to drill this dude and ask as many questions as we can get away with. <laughs> so <laughs> he'll shut us down if we go too far. That's it. So narcotics. I mean, that's you know that's a crazy thing, and and I think you had even told me in a previous conversation that you were a narcotics officer in this area. Uh, I did, did you... some things out here. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, we were in Houston, obviously. I mean, that's where I worked. Yeah. Uh, but some of our cases carried us out into uh, Montgomery County. Yeah. Did you have any long-term cases, ones that drug on for a couple of years or whatever? Yes. Until you, really? Yeah, we did. Oh, man. I, I can't wait to hear it. Yeah. Those. I bet not only working in conjunction with the surrounding counties, you, you probably had some contact with FBI, DAA, DEA to uh, coordinate some of these stings or investigations or that's right uh some of the group that i was in toward the end of my career we worked uh pretty much extensively with dea so we worked all over the you know the greater houston area wow so uh you entered the police force when you were about 23 yep 23 straight out of college yeah straight and out. so and then i guess you were just a patrolman for a while huh right yeah just kind of like carlisle <laughs> yeah <laughs> just like you <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh the first year, uh, basically, when you get out of the academy, you, you're in a patrol car running calls. Um, uh, after that year, you can go to a different station, and yeah. uh, typically you stay in patrol for three or four or five, six years usually. Wow. Or forever. It's up to you. Yeah. So how would you like patrol work? Did it suck, or was it just okay? It was okay. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, mainly pulling people over or mainly answering calls? You know, or? I honestly – I've only written maybe like a handful of tickets in my whole career. Uh, it's wow. just not something that that I did. Yeah. Um, in the area that I worked, we ran calls for service, uh, just like any other patrol officer. And uh, wherever the dispatcher sends you, that's where you go. Yeah. What area were you in mainly? Um, I was the first year I was around the east side of Houston. Okay. Like uh, navigation, seventy fifth Wayside. Mm -hmm. okay. And that was uh, mid to late nineties, right? Uh, late 90s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a rough neighborhood, man. Isn't that where the ghetto boys and all them guys are from? I guess. I mean, it, yeah, it was kind of rough. I mean, wow, there's cool. a lot of places in Houston that are rough. Yeah. 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 So you did that for a while, and then you were able to move straight into – how'd you get into narcotics? I mean, is that something that you wanted? or No, I mean, I never really set my goals to be in narcotics. It just kind of happened over time. Um, yeah. After I got that one year of patrol under my belt, um, I'd signed up to go to a permanent patrol station. Uh, and one day I was walking down the hall and the supervisor said, hey, you're about to leave. And I said, yeah, I'm going over to Eastside and that was going to be my patrol station. And uh, he said, my brother's starting a new group over in Third Ward. Uh, he's looking for some people to interview. Um, you ought to go interview. Here's his number. So. I called him, I went and interviewed, and I got the spot. I didn't think I would, but I did. Yeah. Um, and then what that position was, was it was uh, a proactive unit. So like a hot spot, uh, zero tolerance. Okay. I don't know if you can even say that nowadays, right? I mean, uh, basically, we went out looking for problems in that particular area because it was so inundated with crime and criminals. Right. Um, and so it was more than just... Uh, looking for drugs and and dealers and that kind of thing it was just you've got a a lot of activity here of all kinds it was all kinds so it was like uh, they called it some of it was a nuisance abatement you know um 
there, people just were in that neighborhood. They were tired of everything going on from drugs to mm-hmm. robberies to whatever, you know. So uh, just didn't feel safe walking right. the streets. So they formed this group, and uh, it was eight, there were eight of us, and every day that's what we did i mean wow. we didn't respond to we did to dispatch if something important happened we would go obviously right. but otherwise we were out there just uh looking for bad guys and at that point you were still a uniformed officer right yeah we were uniform um they had they call it like a tactical unit you know okay. um we were we were like bdu pants and you know uh but we were in patrol car yeah i, I bet there was a period of training before you were uh, <clears throat> officially indoctrinated into in a, that particular group it didn't just say okay you got to get to carry a different badge and now go for it no it's all it's the same thing i mean it, it's the same as a patrol officer mm-hmm. um it was just a, a position that within this police station uh, a group of guys that our job was to go proactively police right? okay so um <clears throat> And I know nowadays, I mean, obviously that's not that's not um, the direction that law enforcement's going. Um, this was in the late 90s. Seems like it would work. It, did, it did work. Well, then it why would they continue? Well, they know it works. Um, you know, I, I don't know. It's like in New York um, when Giuliani was there, they did, you know, the stop and frisk or whatever yeah. you want to call it. And um, New York was a hellhole before yeah. he got a hold of it. So yeah. crime went down uh the area where we were at and not just because of us there were other groups in the area that were targeting that area um crime went down you know bad guys went to jail yeah um well they locked them up yeah and and it's nothing i mean we didn't do anything outside of what the laws allowed you know we just used all the laws that we could use sure um to yeah, that's zero tolerance. I mean, that's what it Roman was. Forest still practices zero tolerance. But <laughs> openly, they do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, yeah. I mean. So, it, I'll give yeah, you I an mean, example. Yeah, so you do 31 in the 30. It's woo. Yeah, you know, well, we, we didn't really, on, we didn't you know? use, uh, you know, radar. <laughs> we didn't have radars. Yeah. Um, but a, an example would be there's a certain area of, uh, of, the, of the district is what it's called. Uh, there's a certain area of the district where everyone there knows everyone that lives there knows that the dope dealers stand on these corners they get in these streets yeah you know so we would drive by and they'd be in the street and their sidewalks provided well that's an all that's an offense you know walking in the street where sidewalk provided so we'd stop and have talk and they'd be wanted and they'd have dope in jaywalking right i mean it's jaywalking isn't it yeah, I mean, jay, jaywalking or awesome. it's, walks, the, it's called walking in the street <laughs> right. or sidewalk. Right? Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, That's cool. talk, Giuliani in New York, his operation uh, looked at it like if you get the uh, the small petty drug dealers and and uh, and uh, uh, the minor offenses off the street, those are also your kidnappers and murderers and rapists too. Well, it's a low hanging fruit. Yeah. yeah, but the 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 higher fruit is doing all that little stuff too. Right. You eliminate that, you take a bunch of them off the tree. Yeah, I would yeah. think so. I mean, a lot of the guy, the people that deal with uh, the lower end drug offenses, they're the people that they're going to come steal your weed eater out of your yard. Right. You know. Yeah. To make yeah twenty bucks to so sell it to somebody, their, so they can go get yeah, a, so their, get crack, their crack, crack. You know, or whatever. <laughs> That's I mean, too bad. It's just what it, it is. What it is. Yeah. yeah. So how long were you in that unit? I guess you ran that for a while. So I was in there for I don't know, maybe a couple of years, uh, yeah. and then uh, we worked basically side by side with uh, the gang division and um, the ta- attack team. That we were uh-huh. all three three groups in the same area. Um, so after that, I went to uh, gang division, um, and I did that for a couple of years. Yeah. So was this? Did you work during the day, at night, or both, or Man, just a early weird on, schedule? Early on, it, it, I mean, our shift, we had a set shift, but obviously we would work overtime or whatever in yeah. the evenings or into night. It just depends. Yeah. I mean, but basically it was daytime. Wow. For the most part. Yeah. And I know that they say that HPE doesn't run on quotas, but did y'all have any kind of, I'm not going to use the word quota, expectations. So did you say, okay, well, this month we expect that just – from the figures of the past month, we're going to do X number of arrests and and 
Yeah, so, I mean, I think when people talk about law enforcement and they talk about quotas, <clears throat> they're talking about citations issues. Right. Um, so in our group, that early on group, uh, we had supervisors that expected, right, mm-hmm. a certain amount of arrest. Sure. Um, and it, we did it. Yeah, it probably wasn't uh, hard to do in that neighborhood. No, yeah. and, and you have to think, too, we were all young. I mean, we were go getters. That's what we got on the police department to do. Was right, to twenty five years guys. old, man. Damn, um, you know. And uh, God, when I was twenty five, I was just. I remember. I, I was not even. I was not. I couldn't have done it because I didn't have my shit together enough yeah. to be. I mean, so. Well, yeah. Kudos to you. Well, I'm not saying you know? I had mine all together, but good <laughs> enough to do it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have been able to do it. I don't think. Yeah. So. Because so, I was a little bit everywhere at twenty five. Right, right. Everyone's you know? different. Yeah. Several of the guys we had were uh, military guys. You know, oh, really? Yeah. They so come out of the military, military yeah. and yeah. So they're pretty, you know, yeah. had their stuff together. So in high school, did you want to be a law enforcement officer? I mean, was that what you wanted to do? No, not really. really? I went to high school. I was just in high school. Yeah. You know. Um, but I, you knew you were going to college. Yeah. And you knew it, what you were going to take. So that kind of yeah, it happened probably toward the end of my high school years. Yeah. Um, I became friends with a, uh, a couple of guys in the area that were in law enforcement. One was a trooper and one worked for HPD. Yeah. And so uh, I did ride-alongs with both of them. Yeah. Um, I thought I wanted to be a trooper. Uh, and just after going around with the HPD guys, um, I went that direction. Yeah, a lot more going on with HPD. I yeah, I mean, you know, troopers are, you know, they're great. Um, <laughs> but writing tickets and working wrecks or were the yeah. two things I realized when I got in law enforcement that I didn't like to do. So, sure. And that's kind of, you know, what yeah. they do. Yeah. They're on the highway all day. Yeah. <coughs> that's what they're yeah. Okay. So you go from this, uh, zero tolerance group, I guess, mm-hmm. into the gang division mm-hmm. that had to be an eye opening experience just going into gangs because gangs has got to be a weird thing to get involved with anyway, because they're, they have their own code and they have their own, methodologies and everything else they're not as disorganized as just your guy on the street right it appears yeah i mean the thing with the gangs and the gang division um they commit crimes they sell drugs um you know they steal things i mean you know right they rob people right so they do the same thing that other criminals do that aren't in gangs um so specifically what we did is um they had it broke down, and I was in uh, the Aryan Brotherhood. And that's the group I was in. Really? Working with the FBI yeah. and DEA. And really, that's where I kind of uh, – I'd worked with narcotics quite a bit uh, before mm-hmm. when I was on the zero tolerance unit or whatever you call it. Um, and then when I got in the gang division, uh, a group of narcotic guys, uh, they shut down what was called the organized crime unit that was off of I-10. Okay. They shut it down and they moved those five or six guys to the gang division. Well, those guys were seasoned narcotics guys, you know, and, and some of the, the best that there's ever been at HPD. Right. Um, so I got to work in the, with those guys conducting gang investigations, but really targeting narcotics because that's what they do. Yeah. Um, so at this point, were you still uniformed? No. Ah, no, okay. that was a plain clothes job. So yeah. about three years into HPD, you're already dumping the uniform. Yeah. So <laughs> nobody so let, does So that. let me back up a little bit. <laughs> nobody does so that. I, I mean, I, I probably left off something that was somewhat important. So in that in that hotspot group, yeah, um, we had pro- a problem with prostitution. Okay. So it was like South Maine. I don't know if you know the areas. I know there. everything. I was raised in Houston. Okay. Maine, so so yeah. South Maine. Carraways. Huh? Carraways Club. Yeah. So yeah. All down there, South Main, you know, like uh, around the loop. Uh, how, how do you do The motels. <laughs> I know about it. <laughs> the motels around that area. And then Midtown. Well, Midtown yeah. at that time was starting to uh, boom. Yeah. So they're starting to build townhomes and, you know, yuppies are starting to move in there. Yeah, starting to well, get better. Yeah. There's a pretty serious crime element back then in the late 90s and even earlier, obviously. but with, And prostitution was a problem. So we started doing prostitution stings, and uh, we would come in, obviously undercover, plain clothes, yeah. and we would grab an unmarked car, and we would go pick up prostitutes, yeah. make deals, get, get them off the street. Yeah. 
So that's kind of where I first got the plain clothes undercover work experience. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, um, a big majority of the prostitution problem in our particular district and area was male prostitution. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I said. So wow. there's a Greyhound bus station there. Um, where convicts come out of TDC, they hop on that Greyhound bus, they get dropped off right there, and they're trying to make a dollar. So you have guys straight out of prison that are out there hustling whatever, right, to, yeah. to make some bucks. Uh, so we had to pick up, you know, male prostitutes. Yeah. So being, you know, a kind of all-American guy, that you had know, to be from rough Porter, business. Texas, <laughs> that was a little different, you know. Yeah, uh, I bet it was. And... and you know, the, the criminal element in them, they're convicts, you know, they spent yeah. time in prison, so they knew the system and knew how to, so if you could get one of those guys convinced that you weren't the police and, and make a prostitution case on them. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, you're getting, you're getting somewhere. Yeah. And it wasn't for everyone. There was, I, I mean, there was probably 12 of us guys and, uh, there might've been maybe three or four of us that would actually do that the yeah. rest of them are like no nah, i'm not doing it yeah it had to be rough yeah yeah you know, it was a little different yeah i'm sure it was yeah so that kind of got me going that direction yeah. a little bit um and then in the gang division working with the, the guys that i was working with and like i said a lot of them had spent quite a bit of time in narcotics yeah. uh, so it kind of taught you to step outside of yourself and almost become something else in order to be able to to make things happen I would imagine, right? Yeah, you have to. I mean, yeah. you know, you have to take on a different persona. Well, you have deal. to present yourself a different way. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's it's not easy. I mean, it's, it's – yeah. that's why I think that doing that kind of work is uh, – it's not for everybody. You know, it's not for just – and I'm talking about law enforcement-wise. Right. I mean, they're – Well, yeah, it would just be that way for people altogether. Altogether, yeah. 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 So after the gang division – um that's when I put in to go to narcotics and then I pretty much went there and was there. So when you were, I guess, role playing, were you at, at any point during your career, do you ever think you were comfortable with it? Cause it seems to me like if you actually got comfortable with it, that's when it would freaking get dangerous. You yeah. Know? I mean, like, um, I mean, comfortable with it to the point to where the line got blurred. No, you know, no, not me. No, no. I mean, it, it was like, you knew what you had to do. You knew what you had to be, but you're still a police officer. Yeah. So in the schools that, you know, we had to go to training and whatever, they can teach you everything what not to do. Yeah. But they can't teach you in that training. In this situation, you need to say this or you need to act yeah, like so this. Yeah, it's got to be tough. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's just, uh, you know, an old narc guy told me early on and told, you know, several <clears throat> of us that, your best offense and your best defense is your mouth. And, and it, it was true. I mean, yeah. not guns, not – it's your mouth. Yeah, you got to know what to say and when to say it, exactly. how to say it. Yep, and how to say it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. And, and, it, and every level of – so uh, narcotics is weird because when you first get in narcotics, you go to what's called a street-level squad okay. or a general enforcement squad. And now I'm only talking about HPD. Okay. I don't know what all these other agencies do, um, but I do know that over the years working with other agencies, HPD did it a little different than all the other agencies. Um, meaning that when we were doing undercover cases, we were the ones that were buying the drugs and had more hand to hand uh, interaction. Yeah, y'all didn't use CIs to do it. We so. did. We did, did use CIs. Okay. Um, but not exclusively. Right. You know, our train, we have a training, a narcotics training division. And I say we, not now, but yeah, they I, do. But I got they, it. Yeah. Those guys. After 20 years, yeah, I'd those say guys we, down there. We would work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, they have a training, you know, division that kind of you know, it helps you in things, directions to go. And, and, you know, they've, they've been there. They've, they've done a lot. Um, but back to things to say and not say and do and not do, it's really just getting thrown out there and learning how to do it. <clears throat> so when you first go, uh, to narcotics, everyone goes to the same 
general enforcement groups, a.k.a. street-level groups. Um, and back then there were, I don't know, six or eight of them mm-hmm. spread out throughout the city. And so you're dealing with street-level narcotics. So you're dealing with – it It just depend, depend on what area of town you were in. Yeah. On what your particular mission or job or whatever would be that day or – we just ride around and buy dope. Really? And that's what we did. Yeah. So, <laughs> making the case. Yeah. Well, so you mean, wow. So, right out of the gate, you just get thrown out there and you're just riding around and, and you just ask people on the road or something? Yeah. I mean, so basically, <laughs> you know, uh, I can't imagine that. The first group that hey, I went that really? I went to, um, each group seemed to have all, all had, you know, two or three like really experienced guys that have been around. Yeah. And, you know, of course, they kind of take you under their wing and say, hey, man, do this, do yeah. that. But it wasn't always good information, though, you know, just yeah, because they've done it forever. Right. Right. Um, and out of, you know, each group, let's say, let's just say there's eight individuals in a group. Out of the eight, there's two or three of them that are really good at going out and doing undercover work and buying dope. And then there's two or three that are really good at doing longer term investigations and, and, and figuring things out that way. Yeah. And then there's maybe a guy that's not good at either one of those, but that, you know, he's a former, you know, long-term military guy and he's your tactical guru. Right. You know, he's the guy that the tactician, he's the guy that if yeah. things won't go bad. You want him pretty close, you know, um, that guy. So it's kind of the dynamics are kind of like that throughout yeah. the whole right. every group. You make a good team. Make a good team. Yeah. And um but so you wouldn't just get like it sounded like thrown out there. Yeah. But basically you did. Well. Wow. I mean, everyone went through the same training and there was there they did like a, you know, role playing or yeah. you know, they would put you through different scenarios and how you responded and you know, you shouldn't have done this, do this next time. But in the real world, it's like any yeah, other none job. of that really applies. None of yeah. it matters. you got to yeah. be able to adapt to what's in front of you, <clears throat> yeah. I'm sure. Because everything, everything's different. So, yeah. like, <clears throat> so in these street-level excursions that you went out on, I mean, did you usually start with the lower-end drugs? Like, hey, do you know where you can get some weed? Or did you go right into, man, I need a hit of heroin or whatever? Honestly, it was uh, – we really didn't mess with weed. Yeah. Um, because it was a misdemeanor. Yeah. Um, street level wise, you know, the okay. amount, um, we did, if we were on overtime and honestly, and we needed a case, I mean, and there's somebody out there throw, you know, making it easy yeah, on us. Yeah. You never know. Then yeah. we would, um, we pretty much on those street level squads, we targeted, you know, cocaine, heroin, yeah. meth, crack, which is crack, cocaine, mostly crack, yeah. or yeah. a lot of crack on street level squads. Because yeah. I yeah. wonder if crack is as prevalent as it was back in the nineties. I'm sure because I don't really hear about I'm it sure that it much is anymore. In the, in the Out here, you hear about meth all the time. Uh, uh, meth is the yeah. problem. Well, well you meth. would have to have the <clears throat> terminology down <clears throat> for everything uh, up to date. Yeah, you go in there and you call something. Hey, give me a bag of grass, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't talk to this. 60s yeah. He wants a bag of yeah, grass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and it happened. I mean, right? I, I've, saw, I've seen that happen. I've been around it. I've made mistakes like that myself, you know. Wow. Um, uh, you're asking for something that fits another drug. I mean, that, yeah. that's a telltale oh, yeah. sign to those guys. And not only know? could it mess your case up, it could uh, you could put your life at risk on yeah. something like because that. Because when, when meth really started, crystal meth, yeah. ice, when it really started uh, getting out there, on a big level, yeah. you know, not these guys that are cooking it behind their trailer house out here. You know, I'm talking about, you know, coming from Mexico in large quantities. Yeah. It, when it first came out, everyone talked about it. Everyone in the business, in the meth game, talked about it as like pounds. Well, it's transitioned to kilos like cocaine. But yeah. before it was, if you said, hey, I need a kilo of meth, they'd laugh at you. Yeah. You yeah. Know? It was a pound or half a pound or because they hadn't QB gone to the metric system yet. Yeah, so <laughs> but crazy. but all that stuff is yeah. changed. Like now, I wouldn't probably know half of the lingo that was right. there six years ago. I mean, it's it, it yeah, evolves. it constantly changes. Yeah. I would yeah. think that it would. It does. Yeah. It does. Um, but the street level squads honestly were the most fun. I mean, they were just... Were they? Oh, so a, you're buying small amounts, small quantities of stuff, and it's so it's. 
it was so risky because you had no background. Yeah, man, I'd be nervous as shit. You had no background. Yeah. You you didn't know who you were dealing with. So you're dealing with I mean, you could just be dealing with a guy who's just simply out there trying well, to I've make seen money. places and, and these dudes are probably packing. Right. Yeah. You can yeah. assume that they were, yeah. Yeah. I've seen, uh, I don't know if it was on YouTube or a documentary or something, but there's places in Houston, and I'm sure, I'm sure you know. Well, it's just a, a like a park or maybe just a, a place where a road takes a bend away from everything where it's like a drive through yeah. There are just people milling around, yeah. and you pull up, and they're coming to you. Yeah. Hey, what you looking for? I got this and that. <clears throat> and, no, where's the heroin guy? Oh, he's down there. Yeah. Okay. Did you, you were uh, driving really around in this? Bullshit. Was it yeah. really? Oh, really? yeah, man. Yes, so sir. there's places like what he's was. Oh, I'm sorry, Mark. Mark. There's places like what Mark said wow. that, like a super. Like Mark. everyone in the in the in the drug business, so to speak, knows particular streets are known for whatever. Yeah. I mean, so there's parts of the city that are known for heroin, and it's these three blocks right here. So then you know cracks there was everywhere yeah um, and then meth you know was all mo mostly on the north side of houston you know some of the montrose scene they messed <clears> with <throat> meth but in the hood they didn't mess with meth i mean it was you know crack and uh codeine syrup and yeah. weed you know because crack was a, a, a more um what's the word i'm looking for it i guess cost effective for people of lower yeah economic stature yeah. i mean Five, yeah. ten, twenty bucks. Yeah. You got a rock and you get high. Wow. But like what Mark was saying, there are places, and I won't name them, but there are places that you pull up at night. And they'll just come. And you give them the right look. And they they come like mosquitoes around your car, sticking <laughs> drugs in your car. You don't know which one to buy from. Yeah. Um, and wow. one, of, one of those places, like I said, you know, people make mistakes. I mean, we're, we're, we're cops. Yeah. And we're normal people. Right. And so you're not, it's hard to be on point all the time. I bet a lot of people don't have a stomach for that. <clears throat> no, they don't. Yeah, but, I'd be, so that's what I'm saying. I'd be nervous as shit all the time. But the, the, these yeah. seasoned street guys, uh, I'll give, I'm about to tell you what they did to me, and I fell for it. And then <laughs> to this day, I felt stupid, but yeah. I laughed about it. Um, so I pull up in a corner, like you're talking about, and it was right around downtown i mean and that's another thing look i'll get back to that but people don't understand when you go to work and you drive down 59 or 45 or whatever you don't understand what the elements are out there once you get off those freeways into right. these different neighborhoods um it's just a whole nother world you yeah. know um but anyway they came up to my car just like he's talking about it's 10 o'clock at night i have my windows down yeah by yourself yeah okay and i hear hey officer like hey officer i knew it i knew it you know <laughs> so i immediately as soon as they said it i immediately turned i'm like yeah. oh that was dumb uh, uh you know things like that good so, thing he laughed it off yeah they laughed yeah. you know he laughed it off and it, it was funny i laughed and then but i remembered it yeah you know so and it i don't recall it ever happened again but i wouldn't have turned if it did wow you know, just little things like that just pay attention yeah for sure man so did you ever get close to getting like in deep shit i mean uh, almost yeah. getting caught and things going really well, south like I would imagine they some of them want to hop inside your car with oh, yeah, you. Uh, yeah. Oh, really? You don't oh, know who yeah. the hell's sitting right there. Uh, or, yeah, just follow me over here and just go right to that apartment, and he'll take care of you. And now you're walking, and you're really so those. I mean, honestly, it, it, those things happened a, a lot. Yeah. You know, um, it was just part of it. You know, um, you tried to protect all the angles that you could protect, but... But you still got called out. You don't really, yeah. you can't really protect all those angles. Mm -hmm. um, so, like you're saying, they'll get in your car. And, and that's these, doing these street deals, right? Where yeah. they're just running up to the car and whatever. There, I mean, there are parts of Houston where they would sell us drugs and they knew we were cops. They didn't care. They would sell it to us because you couldn't catch them. They'd be gone. They'd go in. You know their alleys. Yeah, they'd with come, your money. Yeah, with your money, and they'd sell you uh, styrofoam, yeah, they, or whatever. You know. They'd, so even if you did catch them, 
What are you going to charge them with? Well, there's a simulated stu- a delivery of a simulated substance. Oh, okay. So, that, which is a crime? Yeah. A fake huh. drug. Yeah, so if they if they portrayed it, if you ask, hey, give me a crack rock or whatever, and they portrayed it, here's your crack rock, and it's, you know, sheet rock. Yeah. There was a charge for that. Okay. But is the it problem a, but in is these areas? Misdemeanor or felony? I don't remember. I think it was a felony. I was stayed jail really? felony. I wow. think so. Or it may. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, it's still only, bad. It's still bad. Yeah. I mean, it's you know, but there were parts of town like that where you couldn't catch them if you tried. I mean, wow. it wasn't going to happen. And they knew it. They knew it. You know, like <clears throat> when you're doing those street level deals, the the patrol units or we called them the takedown units. They're the ones mm-hmm. that came in and made the rest. They're down the road, you know, so you would have to say. Hey, oh, okay. So you make the buy and then you drive off. Yeah. And then they, and and then then they the, would come okay, grab them. Uniform them. guys would come and get yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought maybe y'all would jump look out. Look at the drugs yeah, and go, okay, no, I got you. No, I mean, there were times where maybe a time or two where you would have to do that. But, yeah. But not no, really. if he, Yeah, if he made the arrest, he'd be busting himself, exposing himself, plus the undercover car he's in. Yeah, we tried to not do that. Yeah. Um, but there were times where we kind of had to. Wow. You know, but but street level, you're not, I mean, you just don't know who you're messing with. That's the dangerous part yeah, about it. Yeah, it seems that, um, like it would be just terrible. You're pulling yeah. up into areas that, uh they don't think you're a cop, right? That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. So they don't think you're a cop. And if they're looking to rob an easy target, you may be that easy target. You know, we got robbed and... Uh, really? Yeah. I mean, I got hit in the head because I didn't put the, cr- the rock, crack rock in my mouth. You know, I acted like it, yeah. you know? Because that's another thing. You know, people think, oh, you're in narcotics. You're a dope head. You know what yeah. I mean? And that's not, d- well, doesn't yeah. work that you way. You can't be. No, man. I mean, you know, we, so didn't, you can't, we didn't use anything. You couldn't. Yeah, you can't. So how, wow. So how yeah, you do, can't. How do you get away with that? Your though? mouth. I mean, you talk your way out of whatever you can talk your way out of. And there's times where you just can't do the deal. Yeah. I mean, if the guy's that persistent, you just walk away and go on down the road. Yeah. You know, when you get into the bigger cases and the bigger dealers, that's where you don't want to do that because you have so much at stake. Yeah. Right. You know, uh, and that's where the pressure is, is there's more pressure, right? The street level guy, it's okay. The guy on the bicycle thinks I'm a cop. He's not gonna mess with me. So what? Yeah. So go on to the next one. But when you've invested resources and time and, you know, you're supposed to meet this particular person and buy x y and z and that's going to get you to these this guy and yeah i would think they'd expect you to try it you know to see if it's I mean, good or whatever i mean that's the way it always is in the movies yeah but you know, you know i i just me i just would talk my way out of it i mean i tell them yeah. look man i'm not I, i'm a businessman yeah. i'm trying to buy you know cars and stuff i'm not trying to get high on dope yeah. you know uh and, and i didn't get all into the image either right i mean some guys go to narcotics and, you know, they get all into the image and tattoos or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I had to get a little different looking, you know. Yeah, you look different when I first yeah, met Yeah, I mean, yeah. you have to get a, you know, you yeah. have to do a little bit. Um, yeah. Uh, meth is what the direction I went. I mean, that was that was my sweet spot. Yeah. Um, just because I was dealing with people that I knew how to deal with, yeah. you know. I don't know, maybe from growing up out here. You just or look whatever. way too healthy to be Country a meth folks. user, though. Yeah, I know I'm a little chunky, yeah. right? But I, yeah. you'd be surprised. There's a lot of fat guys on meth. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody I've seen around here that's on meth, they're, yeah. like, they're a rail and they just look terrible. Isn't it, yeah. Man. Isn't it amazing? Um, it's, it's stages, you know? Yeah. Stages. Isn't it amazing it that you can spot one a mile away because they all get that same look about them? Sunken, gaunt, hollow eyes. They almost look like. They turn into a family yeah. of people that look alike, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like ghosts and shit walking around. Yeah. yeah. Awful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, in, in, you know, doing that, having that career and that job is it <clears throat> actually, you know, I could go to Walmart and I see different things that, you know, other people don't see, even other cops, but other people that did what I did are, you know, so it's like a bond, you know? Yeah. Because it's different than being a cop you know because you are a cop but right. when you when you're walking around all day long you're going into stores you're sitting in parking lots um you're just a 
regular old person. The difficult thing that I would say that was somewhat difficult, or not, not even difficult, just strange, would, would be to be doing all of this undercover work, buying drugs, you know, pretending to be this person that you're not, yeah, and then flipping the switch and going home. Forty minutes later, yeah, and coaching my kids' baseball game or school board meeting. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, and that's why sometimes you know I say things that you know I, I it's hard to keep my mouth shut sometimes because yeah. I was so used to just saying whatever I wanted. Kind of had to, you know. Sure. Uh, yeah. Because it's but it's hard to be a, a dirt bag or act like one when you're not one. And people don't understand that, you know. It seems like it would be. Yeah, but you know it, it's you would think <clears throat> the common person, yeah, you would think that. But there's a lot of people like in even in law enforcement that that don't think that. You know, because I mean I have friends with guys that weren't in narcotics and they're like, oh, it's not not that big of a deal, <laughs> you know. But yeah. uh there, I saw just throughout my career, I saw a lot of people come through the division that were great cops. I mean, and are phenomenal police officers. Yeah. But not good at that. You know, it's just completely different. You know, these guys that work out all day long and they're bodybuilders and they yeah. shave their arms and, you know, they look like a, the image of a police officer, but yeah. they're terrible at this kind of work. Right. Yeah. You know. So I don't know what it takes because, uh, but the guys that I worked with, man, they're the best, and yeah. they're still doing. It. A lot of them are still doing it today. Wow. Yeah. And so you're you're running this street level thing for about how long? A couple of years, I guess. Yeah, I think I did that for like maybe five or six years. Maybe. Damn, that's a most. long time. So how long do you think it took you to get good at it? Six months, three months? Nah, it takes a while, man. Does it? Yeah, that's the thing. They talked about one of the police chiefs came in and talked about. Because I, I bet you right now you can look at somebody and be able to, in your mind, know how you would approach that person and what you would say. And I guess all that shit's kind of pre-planned in yeah. your head five minutes before you walk up to them and, and do the deal. Yeah, I mean, yeah, pretty much. I mean, the street level That's stuff cool. is on the fly. I like it. I mean, yeah. there's guys that, I mean, we had to walk into apartment complexes, you know, ride bicycles into apartment complexes to get in there to yeah. them. Um, it, it's just everything you can think of, you know, go to bars. Uh, we sp had to spend a lot of time in bars. You yeah. Know. I bet you found situations where you were observing <clears throat> many different crimes being committed at the same time. And do I do I blow my cover and take this guy for what he's doing and beating up a, his old lady or something, or and forget the the buying of the whatever? Correct. Yeah, I mean you you're in a tar, you're in a violent area to begin with. Yeah. So yeah, no doubt. I mean we witnessed all kinds of different things, and sometimes yeah. we did have to just jump in. Well, right. in street level, like I said, it, it's it's important. It would be a cool job though. It's I mean, important. It would be a cool you know job. if if Let's just take this area, f for example. You know, if you had guys up and down this road on bicycles and people coming from all over the parts of town buying drugs in front of your house, it would be important for you to get them out of here. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that that's how it was there. You know, um, a lot of the areas that we targeted were citizen complaints. You know, people would call the mayor's office or call whoever and yeah. be like, man, this is ridiculous, you know. Um and it's not like you see with the media and, I mean, I don't know now, but then, yeah, you know, where these people don't want police there. They, you know, they, they don't, they want to defund them or whatever. It, it, it wasn't like that. Right. I mean. They've done polls and studies and the people, the normal <clears throat> people that live in those neighborhoods, they don't want the cops no, to go away, man. They don't want, you know, they don't want that criminal element out there. Like, just like anyone else would, you know, they're no different. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so street level was different, man. It, but it was a lot of fun. I mean, I had a blast. It was like we ran a ton of search warrants on street level. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Um, and and it, so in those search warrants, you would go in then. Yeah, right? yeah. Cool. So, it, and that was the unique thing about the street level squads is you did all your own stuff. 
you did your own buying, you did built your case up, you went and got your search search warrants. Yeah. You executed your search warrants. Most of the squads had a you know a canine in the assigned to the squad. Yeah. So yeah, it was a blast. I mean, kicking doors in and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Did you ever stumble on something bigger than uh, what you had? Kind of along the same oh, lines yeah. of seeing something else going on. But say you got to go into an apartment and you're going to buy a kilo of coke or a quantity of some kind of drug, and the guy says, "Hey, man." I got a bunch of AK-47s, fully automatic. Mm. I sell them by the case. Mm. Let me know how many you want, you know, mm. and they're right over here. Mm. And you make a note of that in your mind and go, who can I add that to the list? For right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, we ran across that yeah. type of stuff. We also, you know, uh, we we jumped on deals and messed other deal, people's deals up, bigger deals. But yeah. not on purpose, you know. Yeah, right. A lot uh, of overlap, I'm sure. A lot of overlap. And, and there's things that I can't talk about. Sure, they take course. care of the overlap yeah. um, a lot of times, but not every time. Um, wow. You know, because you can't have that. Yeah. You know, you can't have two undercovers in the same place. Right. Not knowing it. Right. It's yeah, not knowing it would yeah, be bad. Yeah. yeah. You and can imagine happened. how bad that can go. Huh? And, yeah. it, you know, it's happened. Um, <clears throat> but if you do it long enough, um, it, and it takes a while to get good at it, you know, and some are better than others. Some are always going to be better than others. Um, but it does take a while to just be subjective or subjected to everything. Yeah. You know, it's like any other job. It's like street level. Think of it as uh, you're an apprentice for an electrician. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't make a you don't make a lot of money, meaning you don't get a lot of dope. Right. But you're doing all the work. You're doing a lot of work, yeah. and that's similar, you know. And then right. as you move up, the cases get bigger; they get more complex. <clears throat> um, and then it is you're doing the same thing, just on a bigger level. Yeah. Well, like all the lingo and the persona and all that, did you find that at five or whenever you got off, that sometimes you would end up carrying some of that home? Yeah, I mean, yeah. just to be honest, yeah. Well, that had to be kind of different too. Yeah, I mean, and it, sometimes know? it's caused problems with people's personal life at home. Sure, you know. Um, but the guys that I worked with and myself, I mean, it was a job. You know, yeah. we did it. We had fun. We went home. We want to make sure every all of us went home. Yeah, and then we did it again the next day. You know, uh, cool. Most of the guys that that throughout the whole division were like that. There were some guys that, you know, they just get into the role and, you know, they're they're that 24-7, you know. Yeah. And and that's not realistic. <clears throat> it, it's not what really happens. It does on TV. Yeah. But not in real right. life, you know. I'm sure Hollywood and television is yeah, Hollywood way has, off. Yeah, they're way yeah. off. I mean, Hollywood it, has it, a terrible portrayal of a lot of criminal activity yeah. and gunfire and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's comical, yeah. actually. Yeah, it yeah. really is. People believe it, though. They do yeah. believe it. Yeah. They do believe it. Yeah. Okay, so you're, you you do the street-level stuff, and then you move up to the next. So what's the next level? So it's called, we called it mid-level. Um, okay. Basically, it's the only next level. Uh, there's just different avenues or different... Um, Groups mm-hmm. in the at, at mid level, and so basically, the meth was your thing even at mid level, I guess, huh? Yeah, I kind of got into meth at, at the end of my street level days, okay, because um, it was starting to come around, yeah. and I found some different directions to go, and that's what kind of started me. Yeah, I guess you build up contacts and everything else over a period of time, yeah, informants, yeah. contacts, yeah. Um, you have to have to have a, a, a police guy cell phone and a bad guy cell phone we had yeah we had cell phones i mean you can't carry one cell phone and go oh hang on just a second yeah no this is uh one of my bad guy friends (laughs) oh motherfucker what's up (laughs) yeah well i uh, once i left street level i had three phones so um really yeah you had to keep track of three phones yeah well basically uh, no i kept track of two because one of them i just turned off yeah but we had a you know a police issued phone, city phone, okay. and then the group that I went to was uh, the middle of a group was a Haida group as was called, um, and they provided phones because it okay. was federally funded. Those mid level positions, most of them were feder- federally funded. Yeah. 
So then I just use that phone and then my personal phone. Yeah. Wow. Um, See how complicated it gets. Yeah, it was, yeah, that know, would suck. But, but that, know? I mean, that was the you phone. Three wasn't, completely different phones. Yeah. Because if not, you, you know, two iPhones, I'd get confused right off the bat. Yeah. yeah. Paint them different colors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd have to. Right. So you go mid level, and then now you're dealing with a little bit larger quantities, I guess, or mm -hmm. or guys that are uh, distributors or yeah, bigger guys, right? So yeah. um, looking back at the street level, they're <clears throat> they're just hustling. Yeah, you know, um, trying sometimes to make their, trying to make their daily cash. Sometimes it was uh, easy to mess with them. You know, it's just all about sh 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 the money. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it was difficult because they're aggressive and they're gangsters and they want to be gangsters yeah um and then when you get up a little higher and you mess with the guys that they're paying their bills you know by selling dope and uh driving nice cars and having nice houses and nice yeah. boats you gotta be a big time bad guy to talk to those guys it, or they think you are yeah and it's uh but it's a different it's a different world yeah it's a for the most game, part i would think right yeah. and yeah you're right you don't the great big guys, you you don't you don't ever talk to them, you know. Um, you might talk to them on the phone, but on the street, you're not talking to those guys, right. mm -hmm. you know. Not me, you know. Yeah, there may be some themselves. other UCs yeah. that um, older guys, you know, that can speak their language, so to speak. Yeah, um, Spanish or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, so most of the meth, I guess, at that time period was coming out of Mexico. Yeah, it was. I mean, our, I think it still is these days. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah they can't they can't produce it like they do over there. Wow. I mean, it's mass, mass production. Yeah, they have big factories yeah. that make that shit. Didn't they just make a bust? I heard on the news, they pulled over a <clears> pickup <throat> truck, a bunch of guys jumped out and ran. They caught about a half of them, but in the back of the pickup truck, they have buckets mm. of meth. Yeah. And I forget how much it was, but it's like two or twenty million yeah, dollars about worth that. of something. I heard about that. Yeah. Yeah. My God. <clears throat> yeah, it's um it's exploded. Yeah. Um so when the meth kind of and, and I'm not saying it started because obviously it's been around for a long time, but crystal meth is what I'm referring to. Yeah. You know, there's old biker meth that was around in the sixties or powder same stuff. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. But uh the crystal meth, you know, when it started really blowing up it was two thousand dollars, twenty six hundred dollars, twenty two hundred dollars an ounce, you know. And I just heard Damn. not too long ago it's like <clears throat> one hundred and fifty bucks. So for I mean, an ounce, yeah. So it's like uh, wow. it, you know, it's what changed, happened to that market? It's changed a lot. It's flooded. <laughs> is what it it's is. flooded. Yeah. It's flooded. Yeah. Mm. But so yeah, mid levels was a completely different <clears throat> deal. Um, the cool thing for me is my boss at. Um, street level mm -hmm. went to mid-level and then several of us guys went to work so for him kind of made, so yeah and then some of the guys that were on my mid-level group were on my group when i worked in that hot spot group and then or at the same office they were on a tag team or something so i've known these guys for 20 some 20 years sure you know or whatever it was at the time <clears throat> 14 years and at that point you yeah you develop a relationship yeah we're like i mean brothers man yeah. i mean uh one of the guys, as a matter of fact, uh, I went to high school with him. He and I were in school together at uh, third grade. Yeah. Uh, and then we lost contact through college. And I didn't even know he was a police officer. Uh, he would, to like, I had like four or five years on and I ran into him or whatever. And he's in that, was in that group and he's still in that group. Wow. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's lifelong bond. Yeah. For sure. So did you move beyond the mid-level thing or was that basically? No. There were just different levels of mid level. Yeah, I guess. so they caught they you know ours the group we were in was uh, tarp, it was uh, trains, airplanes. No, not trains. What is tarp? I don't know. I remember what it stands for. Uh, huh. Anyway, it, there were different groups. There were major drug squads. There was uh, T net. Yeah. Um, just meaning, you know ones working predominantly with DEA and then other ones uh, like DPS or whatever just a there was a lot of a uh, multi-agency right so work. in that would you be working multiple cases simultaneously or were you just trying to you know affect one case at a time just so you could put your I, you know sometimes you know, your there would be sometimes there'd be more than one mm -hmm. but most often one yeah you know because uh, 
just the things we were doing it they were time consuming it wasn't a run out there and you know do this or do that yeah um, and then <clears throat> when you get into that level most of it's not done hand to hand uh, meaning you're using informants more um, you can only buy so much right I mean yeah. the police department's not going to turn over you know 300 grand for you to go wow buy drugs and but y'all are dealing with significant amounts of cash i would imagine yeah cash that you have to recover i would think no yeah sometimes well yeah sometimes you do sometimes you don't yeah um but you know but that would be the goal that i would imagine well it just depend yeah. on what it was i mean yeah. i mean if we were just working our way up we would just let it go I mean, man it's just part of it yeah um but doing those type of cases it was uh more of a business you know it was more matter of fact but they're much more intelligent and that's where you get questioned that's where you have to sit down and <coughs> explain what you're doing and why you're doing it right you're not a cop yeah. you know and so on and so forth so uh, have you been in some hairy situations where they didn't believe that oh yeah really uh, oh yeah and your mouth is really working overtime at that point, I'm sure. Yeah, it's either you make it work with your mouth or you pretty much walk away. And sometimes the greed would kick in. Yeah. And you would sell it as strong as you could sell it legally to them that you weren't a cop. Yeah. Um, and then the greed would kick in. They knew you had the money or the money was close. And um, they would just go for it, you know. Yeah. Uh, I actually, I've had them tell me, man, <clears throat> I knew you were a cop. I knew it. I just, yeah, I just did it, man. The greed overrode you know? the right the common sense. Yep. Um, and I can think of a time where I was in the guy's driveway, and uh, he was questioning me good. You know, I mean, he was he was hitting me with all the right stuff, and um, I just kept telling him, man, I don't have time for you. You know, your mom's in the house. My car's right here. We're going to do this or not. I, I, I don't have time to sit here and go, keep going back and forth with you. So, I mean, we played this cat and mouse for a few minutes. And yeah. finally I said, man, I ain't mess with you anymore. And I got to my car and then he came over there and he's like, just give me the money, man. So he did it, you know, and yeah. then he's the one that told me later because uh, <laughs> I tried to use him for an informant down the road. Yeah. Um, so I approached him and he was like, oh, man, I knew it. Were you able to turn him? Nah, he didn't do it. No? Mm -hmm. How so, often were you able to turn people? So, I mean, it, I, it just depends yeah. on the on the person. Um, yeah. I guess if they were looking at a lot of time, it'd be a lot easier. Normally. Really? Yeah, if they could negotiate something really, out of it. Really, informant-wise, I mean, just me personally, <clears throat> from my experience with them, uh, the paid informants were the best. Better than ones so. yeah. ones that were working off the case, you know? Yeah. They would give you what they wanted to give you. The paid ones knew that... I mean, we paid based on the amount, um, and then working based on the amount of drugs that they or were able money. To, well, so their incentive to produce was right there. Was yeah. it yeah. was it good money for them? For real good ones, yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. I mean, and there's a lot of guys in narcotics that they made their career off of one informant. I mean, one really, really good one. Wow. You know, I mean, if, if those guys are connected enough to say that house right there, yeah, that eighteen wheeler, that airplane that's going to Cleveland, yeah, right? I mean, you know, some of them are that connected. Damn. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's different. Yeah, but yeah, we got into some hairy situations. Yeah, people pulling guns on you and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Screw that. Yeah. And you were always by yourself. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it just depends <clears throat> at the time on the the what we could pull off. If we yeah. could pull off two of us, three of us. That's what we did. Yeah. If yeah. we couldn't pull that off, then it was one of us. And uh, it was always just a guess. It was a guess. Damn. And then things, you know, they yeah. don't, things. that's the thing that's funny in narcotics is because even on these bigger cases, we planned them. And we, pl we knew who we were dealing with for the most part. Um, we knew kind of what they were capable of. But it's the curveballs that just happen that you – just yeah. have to go with you know um i can think of several i mean one time I, we were at um, little york in 59 at the taco bell and i was meeting a guy there and my boss said 
you know, get if you got to get have to get in his car, just you know, do what you got to do, but stay in the parking lot. And uh, I said, all right, I'm not leaving that parking lot. I'm gonna meet his window. I'm not leaving that parking lot. Well, of course, and I have a black cloud. I mean, by the way, I mean it. It followed me. Yeah. So if I said something, it probably would happen. Would happen. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, okay. So he pulls up. Well, typically that parking lot's almost empty. You yeah. know, at two or three in the afternoon. So there's plenty of places for him to have parked. So I pull in. You know, and I didn't back in because that's what people do. Yeah. Uh, you might have to edit that one. But uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> so uh, he pulls up and he doesn't park. Well, there's parking everywhere. Yeah. And he's like, wave, you know, tell you, man, come here. So I go to the passenger side, roll down the window. He's like, man, get in. I said, just come on, man. No, get in. I was like, oh, here we go. So he go, he, I get in and he goes to back up to park. Yeah. But he can't. Now there's a lady behind him. So he has to make the block. And I'm going, oh, no. I told him I'm not leaving the parking lot. Yeah. And so. And were other guys watching, I guess? Yeah. They were. That area you could watch from a distance. So they start. I see them moving. One guy comes up the the wrong way of the service road. And I'm telling the guy, take a right right here. This guy's obviously he's drunk or something. Yeah. And it worked out. Yeah. But if he would have kept going, it wouldn't have worked out. I mean, they would have got me out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, there was another time where there's a particular and same area of town, there's a particular neighborhood that everyone in there for the most part is in the drug business and it's old families. They've been grandma sells dope, you know, Damn. Yeah. but there's only one way in and one <clears throat> way out of the neighborhood. And they were, it was kind of a bigger deal we were trying to do. And, um, uh, you can't get in the neighborhood to watch anyone. To keep an eye on yeah, your guy. Yeah, one no way in and out. And, they're, and they they're have, probably have lookouts. They do. They shit. have lookouts yeah. and two-way radios and the wow. whole nine yards. Sophisticated. So I told him, I said, my boss, you know, who's a good friend of mine, you know, I said, look, I'm going to go to his driveway and I'm going to do it at the end of his driveway. So I called him and the guy's like, oh, yeah, man, come just come by the house. I got it. So I pull up to the house and I honk. And he comes outside and he's like, come on. And I said, no, I'm good. I'm good. No, man, come on. And I'd met him a couple times. Yeah. An informant introduced me to him. Yeah. So he's like, thinks I'm, you know, cool. His yeah. buddy, you know, yeah. I'm his best friend now. Yeah. And uh, so I get out of the car. I walk up the driveway. He's like, man, just sit on the back porch. I'll get it. I will get, I'll get it for you. I said, all right. So now I'm completely away from the front of the house right. i'm away from the road i'm in the backyard you're not mobile you're on foot i'm on foot and uh i get to his back porch and i look and there's a guy sitting on the couch on the back porch covered from head to toe and tattoos he was like a aryan circle from yeah. out here i knew that i didn't know his name but i knew that he was wanted out here yeah and uh so the guy that was supposed to have given me the drugs, he's inside talking to his wife. <clears throat> so I'm on the porch trying to small talk with this guy. Yeah. And he tells me, man, it's not here yet. The guy on the porch, I'm like, what do you mean it's not here? And he's like, oh, he's calling so-and-so from down the street. They're going to bring it. Well, then the, the Aryan Nation tweaker that was on the porch with me, he starts talking about this helicopter. He's like, did you bring the helicopter? <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, we're out there with DEA and stuff. I was like, yeah. no, they're not. I said, no, that's a, a pipeline helicopter. Yeah. You know, that they check out the pipelines. Well, there's no pipelines in that area. So good, luckily, he's not smart enough to realize that that right. was stupid. Um, so after some time, someone shows up and brings it and they yeah. give it to me and I leave. But things like that happened a lot. You know, um, just out of curiosity, how much dope was that? I think it was four ounces of meth. Wow. Yeah. I think it was four ounces of meth, but you know, things like that happen. Yeah. So what kind of helicopter was it? <clears throat> I don't even know. Yeah. I mean, it's a big white helicopter. Right. Didn't have anything to do with us. It was just flying low like treetop. He bought the pipeline deal. <laughs> That's yeah. Good he enough. bought it. <clears throat> he, he got lucky it. on that one. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, Damn. were you ever wired for sound? 
I know that's Hollywood, but yeah, no, I can't. I can't answer that question. Okay, no, fair, enough. We, fair no, enough. Nah. Well, no, we didn't. We didn't wear wires. Y'all didn't. Nah. Didn't need to. I don't guess. Because mm-hmm. that would be my luck. All right, we're gonna sell you this million pounds of cocaine. As soon as you strip down and show us that you're, you don't have anything. Yeah, on. No yeah, shit. that's TV, man. Yeah. yeah, that's TV. I'm sure. I mean, they check you for guns, but it, it was. Do they good. check you for guns? Yeah. And so, damn, you didn't, I would have been strapped to the hilt. No, I, I mean, yeah, I had a gun. Yeah. It's like, yeah, so what? I got yeah. a gun. Yeah. I'm not going to yeah. use it on you, man. But Most bad guys got a gun. Yeah, so exactly. So that, I mean. They'd take it away from you for a few minutes, I'm no, sure. No, they wouldn't either. I'm not giving up. You don't give up your gun. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you walk away. I mean, try to get away. <clears throat> Sometimes, you know, it didn't happen to me, but it happened to other guys in my group. You, you can't get away. Things get bad. And, Ugh. You know, um, yeah. Friends of mine, guys I worked with, they're sitting in the Luby's parking lot one night, and guy decides he's going to hop out of the bushes with a ski mask, and he robbed them, you know. But they used some tactics and outsmarted him, and he's no longer with us, you know. Uh, happens. It happens. Yeah. Right? So, um, and it's happened quite a bit, you know, yeah. but that's just kind of not part of it. Obviously, it's not part of it, but it does happen. So what about your badge? Keep a badge or no? No, nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Man. Nothing to identify you as <clears throat> law enforcement. No, you definitely don't do that. No. Did you ever get busted? By? By other cops? Yes. Really? Yeah. All you people in this room, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> put your hands behind your back, yeah. spread them on the yeah. wall. That had to be fun. Yeah, I mean, sometimes on <clears throat> purpose. Oh, really? Yeah, and then sometimes not, uh, on, yeah. not on purpose. To show some street cred? Yeah. Yeah, Fred got oh, busted with us last week. Don't worry, let yeah. him in. Yeah. yeah, so sometimes you get arrested or fake arrested yeah um but they don't bring you through the whole process of taking your picture and doing your fingerprints and all that shit no right? not no 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 yeah not for that it's for a show <clears throat> for the bad guys <clears throat> now that but, happens but for other reasons really mm-hmm. but you did get busted like without the cops knowing you were a cop right well i wouldn't say busted but yeah pulled over you know jacked up a little bit yeah. you know um a time or so <coughs> wow know, but i get it i mean we were in that area you yeah know? um they were working yeah so you know um but yeah i well, mean you just had to tell them look man you got the wrong dude <laughs> yeah or no i just tell them you know i'm a cop you know yeah um but i yeah, mean that's that wasn't that big of a deal wow yeah so but yeah, it was things. I mean, it was a good job. It was fun. I bet it was fun. Exciting, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. fun. And it, you're doing the the good work. Yeah, I mean, I think I think so. Yeah. Did you? And and this sounds stupid, but I'm gonna ask anyway. Did you experience any health problems from it, like high blood pressure or just anxiety to the max or mm-mm. none of that kind no, of shit? Mm-mm. So you were good. Yeah, I think you know I'm no health uh, guru by any means, but. You know, I think certain personalities work for that mm-hmm. job, and certain personalities don't work. Yeah. Um, and you quickly figure out which ones work and which ones don't uh, amongst friends. Um, right. And, and so there's there there are those guys that, like we talked about with teamwork. There are those guys that know they can't do undercover work. They can't do it. I mean, yeah. they're, but they may be you know, real tactical and yeah, you know, great at something else, something else. Right. Wow. So kind of made it work. Then other guys just faded smooth out. Yeah. They just, it, it wasn't for them. Yeah. You know, um, <clears throat> the ones that not, you know, not to talk about a certain cops or police officers, but the ones that are like robo cops, mm-hmm. you know what I'm talking about? Like yeah. If you were like, let's say you were a Marine, you know, you're hut two, three, four, yeah. you know, clean cut, boom, in shape. And then you transition, you become a police officer, and you're that same guy. Yeah. And, and you can't pull off of that. Right. You're, n- you're never going to do this job. Right. You'll never do They'll it. They'll see right through that anyway. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And But some of those guys, you can't tell them that. You know, they have to figure it out for themselves. Yeah. You know, um, the ones that are honest about it, you know, they figure it out. And I have quite, I have a, a lot of friends that are in narcotics that are that way, and they know. Yeah, you can survive in the division, doing the job, without buying drugs, um, 
but I just liked it. Yeah. And it was part of it. I thought you needed to do it all. So Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So what's the biggest haul you ever took in? I don't know, man. It's got to be mean, something good. We did. 100,000 pounds, some shit like no, that. No, no, we didn't do 100,000 pounds. I mean, we, we did quite a bit kilos, you know, a couple hundred kilos. And, really? Yeah, that's a lot. You know, but it, yeah. a lot of those big hauls, man, they're coming from tips. You know, they're coming from an informant that's telling you that truck, that 18 wheeler. Yeah, so it wasn't from working your no, way up. No, no. Right. I'd say working my way up, you know, um, starting whatever i mean i did a case that with a group of guys that lasted a couple years and you know i was doing most of the undercover work with all the different runners the guy had and he was he was a bigger guy and yeah um i don't know i think at the end of it we probably had like 100 kilos but we wrapped up you know 20 or 15 people Wow. Seized all their houses, cars. I mean, it was... Yeah, it's like Scarface Jr. Yeah. And yeah. it was a federal case. You know, the the feds, they are good about that once you get it to that level. Right. You know, they, they get quite a bit of time, you know. Because um, I've had guys that have reached out to me, like on Facebook, that I put in prison, you know. Um, wow. Really? Yeah. I mean... And they know who you are? Yeah. <clears throat> Does yeah. that bother you at so all? It's you ever like, think somebody's going to come and try to kill you or something? Nah. That's why I'm saying it's not like TV. Because if you d if if I did the case and I was the, the, the person doing the buying, I'm the witness. Yeah. So when it goes to trial, I'm the guy. So, and then they're using your real name. Yeah, it's me. Yeah. What's, you know, what's your name? Jason yeah. Dunn. Wow. You know, um, so the gig's up by then for sure it's up before then because they get yeah. all of our reports and you know you can't really hide all that stuff right. that transpired throughout the right. whole deal yeah so at the very end uh, the gig's up you can't have an anonymous witness no right no and and that's the thing that a lot of of these other agencies and some hpd they use informants and rely on them well when it comes time for prosecution that's your star witness so, you yeah. know, that's not good. Plus, right. a lot of times you don't want that person testifying. Yeah, you need a credible witness yeah, to start I mean, out so with. Yeah, I may act like a dirt ball for two months, but I'm not a dirt ball, and I'm coming to court with my stuff together and my paperwork and everything done right. Yeah. You know, um, and you're going to get what you get, but you're going to know who I am. Right. So that's the difference, you know, of real life versus TV. And so these guys have reached out to you on Facebook, and what do they want? At the two that reached out to me, uh, one of them told me that how good he's doing now. He's yeah. got a good job. He lives in a nice house. He's He wasn't thanking me, but he was just, want, I guess, wanted to reach out to me and let me know. Well, that's cool. Yeah. 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 You know, the other one's similar, <laughs> but the other one wanted something. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get just a tad bit political. I want to talk about the war on drugs itself because, you know, there's – it's been going on now for many, many years, and there's a lot of people who say that no headway has ever been made in the war on drugs. And, you know, being that you were there and, you know, you took down X number of bad guys and all that, I mean, I know that on a local level, you probably think that it's, there was some headway made, but I mean, do you think that in the larger picture of things, any headway has ever been made or I think, you think we're on the right track? Now, no, yeah. definitely not. No? no, no. What's what's okay? Well, now, just you can see what what goes on at the borders. Mm -hmm. It dictates what goes on in the narcotics world. So when it's free flowing through the borders, it's free flowing in the narcotics yeah. world. Meth and fentanyl pouring across the border right now. Fentanyl that they're catching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're That's catching like eighty like percent more. Yeah. And what, in the first few months when they did all of last and year. And what they catch, you know, is probably, I mean, I'm assuming minuscule yeah. compared to what actually, yeah. you know, you don't know the it. percentage because you don't know the unknown. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so <clears throat> I, my guess. So really you think that you're just outmanned? I mean, really? It's just yeah, it's, a lot it's more so, people doing the drug thing than there is fighting it. Yeah. There's so much money, you know, it's a, it's yeah. a, it's a money, it's a business. Yeah. A big business, right? And I mean, with all the users in America, yeah. I mean, the 
people in Colombia with the cocaine and Mexico and with the meth and getting it across the border. I mean, I don't so see. So I guess meth has become the big deal because the whole weed business fell apart because we kind of legalized here in this country to a certain degree. Yeah, day. I mean, I guess. I, I don't, yeah. I mean, we, we did mess with marijuana, but it was on a big level. Yeah. And it was typically money cases. Yeah. Like, you know, we were looking for their money, their assets or whatever. Yeah. Um, and they were running 18 wheeler loads of marijuana around yeah. town. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know to answer your question. I mean, I, I'm assuming that someone that would understood the trends on the border could tell you maybe if they thought it was winning, you were winning the war or losing it, mm -hmm. or if there's even a war at all, if it's just going to be like this forever. Um, my guess is that when the border is tight and yeah. it's tough to come across, it's harder for the traffickers as well. Yeah. So then I would think it, there would be a, a decline. So the largest percentage you think is coming from south of the border, huh? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. That's a, Well, that alone is the argument for border security. Mm -hmm. I mean, not to mention, you know, just the, the number of illegal aliens that have come through also. And the human suffering you know? that goes with it. And the enriching yeah. of the cartels. Who will make money off of everybody who comes across there? Yeah, I mean it. it yeah, they're sophisticated. You know, that goes both ways too. It's it's going that way and this way. Yeah. It's crazy. Money, yeah. money's going that way. Yeah, and drugs are going this money way. Money and guns, from what I hear. Yeah, yeah. But um, I mean, you have to think of it business wise. It's worth nothing in Mexico. Drugs are worth nothing there. Yeah, they're not worth anything till they get here. Then they have a value, and depending on where they go here is what the value is yeah so houston the price of i don't know i don't even know the numbers now but let's say a price of uh cocaine a kilo of cocaine in houston let's just hypothetically say today it's twenty five thousand. Mm -hmm. well up north you know or in the midwest or wherever it may be thirty seven thousand or whatever the number yeah. however yeah. much risk it took to get it there yeah there's well, that's, yeah that's gotta be what it is yeah. but but when it's sitting anywhere away from the u.s it's had its values nothing yeah you know so they're going to go to whatever lengths they've proved it to get it here yeah and now just i mean i haven't been to the border but uh i'm assuming uh that it's coming across you know free flowing wow yeah so did you ever have to travel in any of this kind yeah. of stuff you did yeah we went down to uh, McAllen and down to the border a few times. Oh, wow. We had some deals set up and down there and brought stuff back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a few times. Most of the things we did were North Houston, really. Really? Yeah. Once I, once I left street level, most of everything was North Houston. Hmm. Some on purpose. I mean, I'm not yeah. going to lie. Uh, if we could orchestrate where to do it, um, we got in a habit of trying to move them up north mm -hmm. yeah. to Montgomery to your County. Turf. To Montgomery your County. Familiar yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just um, the the DAs, the prosecutors, um, the jury members were different. So yeah. the outcomes of our hard work. Uh, yeah, they say the prosecution level's a lot more in Montgomery County than it is in Harris County. Yeah. I don't know why. but Well, I'm talking not now because i mean i don't know the dynamics now mm -hmm. um i do but i'm not gonna say it okay. but, but yeah so yeah. years ago or eight nine years ago whenever we were doing it, it 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 was different then um so if given the opportunity if they said hey where do you want to meet instead of meeting in humble we would meet in kingwood um you okay know. yeah so well, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, just being tactical about it. Yeah. And then also on the federal side, the the, the boundaries so to, uh, are different, you know. So you have the Southern District of the United States and you have the Eastern District of the United States. Well, the Southern District is inundated with narcotic cases because yeah. it's you compromised Houston and, you know, where the Eastern District is Beaumont. So it's you know, north of uh, Splendora is the Eastern District. So some of the cases we would, you know, try, try to yeah. move them up a little north, 
a little more north. Yeah, makes sense. You know? mm-hmm. So, uh, but yeah. So do you think the average person would be surprised as to how much drug stuff there is out just yeah. out in this area? Yeah. I bet. Yeah. yeah. The average. Yeah, I keep hearing about it. I, you know, everybody says meth this and meth that, and it's all over the place, And but I don't really ever see a – but I don't run in those circles either. Right. So. But, I mean, you have to think. So in Houston, maybe right now, some of these police officers are – running their calls, doing what they're doing their job, but they're not putting, they're not maybe as aggressive as they were in the past. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Montgomery County, the officers are still proactive and, you know, working in the areas. So you may not see it as much because they're making arrest and, you know, they're, they're getting these, some of these people off the street. Yeah. But, uh, you know, meth is just, I mean, I guess it's going to be here forever. That's I mean, nasty. Here. It's got like battery acid and all kinds yeah, of it's, shit. Yeah, it. it's bad, man. Man, I mean, it's why acetone. anybody would try that is beyond me. As much as it's been destroying you know, people, the thing is, is forever. That you know? stuff steals your soul. I don't. I have, that's what those people look like. They, yeah, like their just, soul's been stu- sucked right. right out of them. Because I don't, I don't think too many people can come back from that shit. It's, it's almost like it, it gets a hold of you, and you can't ever quite shake it it's a shame yeah i mean i've seen people i know i mean you know friends of mine i've seen get on that stuff and lose everything they had well we do know some people in the neighborhood that have been unfortunately involved i've seen uh, and they just can't seem to shake it they mm -hmm. try right you know and get on that path that's good but eventually they go on a bender and that's it have you seen those things where they show a guy early in his life or a girl and they'll show mugshot after mugshot after mugshot of this meth head. Yeah, I've seen them. And you just see them deteriorate over eight or ten years into this skeleton that looks like the rest of those skeletons out yes, there. And nobody shit. grows up thinking, man, I can't wait to grow up and do my own thing and be a meth head. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta, we got to save these people where we can, man. Yeah, I, I don't know the answer. I don't think uh, you can. I really don't think you can. I mean, from my experience, at least, and dealing with a few of them. Just get it off it's, the street. Yeah. And the open border is not the way to get no, it off the street, I can tell you that. It's highly addictive, apparently. Apparently so. Yeah, I think the probably the first time. You know, and I talked to this chick about it one time, and she said that it just makes you feel so incredible. It's like you're three times the mm. human that you are. Yeah. You know, and I guess it lasts a while. Yeah. I've yeah. had informants tell me that, and they're – I think they chase that first and second and third time, you know. I think there's to, yeah, different to drugs it. that do that trying to, to you. That yeah. feeling to come yeah. back. I've heard the same thing about crack and yeah. Yeah. everything. See, meth's all, I mean, it's weird. It's a weird drug because there's a, they can smoke, you can smoke it. Yeah. You know, you can shoot it. Yeah. You can eat it. You know, yeah. so it's like some people shoot it, some people smoke it, some people eat it, and some people do it all. Wow. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's bad. It's a bad deal. Yeah, it's too bad. It's bad out here. You know, I wish it would be bad somewhere else. And it's really not I just a. Don't want it in my neighborhood. It's a chemical, isn't it? I mean, it's not like a plant based. I think it's of, a. No, it's chemicals. Yeah, it's, it's like a, a combination of a whole bunch of crap. You know, and it's dangerous, obviously, to make because right over here on Tram Road, when you go out, there's a house on the right hand side that looks like an old farmhouse, and the top of it is just burnt off. And they say the guy that was, he was cooking some sort of meth shit and blew his house up. Mm. You know, so who wants, mm-hmm. to, who wants to get involved in that if you're going to blow your place up? Well, right? he, he didn't think that was going to happen, did he? Yeah, the I mean, meth labs, that used to be, a, I mean, a common occurrence, yeah. you know, running into those labs. But but there's not labs anymore because now it's probably pretty easy to get. Yeah, they, made, from they made it tough to make, to make it, you yeah. know, with the, uh, the ingredients here in the States. Plus... They're mass producing it there. I mean, labs. I mean, they're making yeah. it. Damn. Know. Yep. So, what do, what do you think about eradication in Mexico? Is that a possibility for America? To do what? To eradicate that shit in Mexico. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how yeah. you would do it. I mean, I guess if you went in there and. Boots on the ground. I, yeah. I'd you know, and that's way. what they're saying. Eventually, it's going to be the Well, the Mexican government happen, might, might have something to say about that. Well, they definitely would have something to say about that. Yeah. But I think that's eventually where we're going to end up if we're ever going to solve the problem. Or at least if we're ever going to take the problem on seriously. 
you know, instead of just trying to battle it on a local mm. level. Well, I mean, know? so we're talking about pretty much the we've talked about meth pretty much exclusively, but um, I mean now there's a, there's all types of drugs. You know, there's all, all a lot of people are addicted to these painkillers and prescription drugs and yeah prescription you know so drugs all that's a big too. problem too you know yeah. um and like you said fentanyl fentanyl is like kinda, that's a heroin thing isn't it? kind of new yeah they yeah. started cutting heroin with fentanyl maybe a few years ago and now it's like what they do you know and hmm. so fentanyl some pretty bad stuff I, i'm not real i'm not expert on fentanyl but yeah. uh things i've read about it i mean it's yeah, they didn't have any of that shit when I was a kid. I know. They had, they had weed and, yeah. you know, Mandrax and all that kind of yeah, shit yeah, when yeah. I was a kid. Yeah. You know, they, LSD. They, yeah. Yeah. You know, but they didn't have any of this other weird meth and crack and all that stuff came out when I was older. And I was like, eh. Right. You know. And crack just sounds like a poor man's drug to me. Just some, it's like soap and cocaine or something mixed, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's just, who wants to do that shit? Soap and cocaine? Isn't that what it is? No, no, it's, it's not. something so. in cocaine mix. They'll, yeah, there's all, there's some ingredients, but yeah. like baking soda. Oh, okay, not I soap. thought it was like detergent. Like I soap. think you no. can take the powder. Soap is what they'll sell you as crack down there in Houston. <laughs> We've bought soap before. <laughs> really? that, that's the street term for it? <laughs> no, it's just, I that's mean, awesome. everyone's running a scam down uh, there. You oh, know? wow. I mean, yeah. Yeah, with cheat rocks, soap probably rocks off the ground i mean you know just Damn. doing what they can do yeah doing everybody's gotta make do. a buck yeah i mean everyone's hustling <laughs> yep. yeah that's something else yep well jason I'm, I'm glad you finally took the time to to make it in i appreciate it i know you're a busy guy and so uh i do appreciate your time and yeah i enjoyed and, it uh, yeah, some pretty interesting stories. Yeah, hopefully I didn't. So I, I didn't get to ask you, though, so why out? I mean, if you enjoyed it and all, it was good, so you're still a young guy. So, my, yeah. You know, I always wanted to do so, something out in Montgomery County. Yeah. And working and doing deals in Montgomery County. Yeah. And working with the law enforcement in Montgomery County, you know, and then the JP deal popped up, and it was just timing. Yeah. You know, um I was, I I, mean, I kicked it around because yeah. I did I did like what I did, what I was doing, yeah. um, and the camaraderie and the guys. Yeah. Um, so it was hard to to leave that part of it, yeah. but I left man at the perfect time. Yeah, I bet you did. Yeah, there's I a did. lot. I hear you on that, that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, so. Well, I hear as a JP that you're awesome, and word around the campfires, you're doing a great job, and you're fair and impartial, and. I bet with your history, you're the right guy to be doing that job. So I try to be. When are you up for re-election? Next year. Really? 2020, yeah, 2022. God, Is that a four-year or a six-year? Yeah, it's four years. Yeah. 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 Good yeah. luck, man. Three years yeah, has gone by quick. It has. Damn. Time flies. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate your assistance in my campaign, too. Oh, yeah. Even though I didn't make it, I, you know. Yeah. If we wouldn't have been thrown in the general election. Oh, yeah, that's a tough election I'd have to made be it. in, man. I'd have made it. Tough election. So if it would have gone down in May, yeah. I would have won. I just followed suit yeah. down the line. Yeah, it sucked. Clicking. But, <laughs> and it taught me a lesson. It taught me never to run from anything again. For anything or <laughs> yeah, from? I'm not going to run from anything <laughs> ever again. Come so, on, man. you got to keep going. Yeah. You can't know. get that dirty, can you? <laughs> yeah, I just I just don't think I want to do it. it. Because that campaign went on for almost a year. It was a yeah, tough campaign. I remember. You know, yeah, it was rough. I didn't live here. I couldn't vote for you. Yeah. Politics are rough, man. Yeah. Especially yeah. for me. I mean, I came from what I was doing to, like. Yeah, I don't know how you front. made that transition. It was transition. weird. I mean, I yeah. just I felt so strange. Yeah. I bet. You know. Um, but your honesty came through, and that's why you won. Because, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, it was obvious. You know, you were the right dude for the job. Yeah. So. I think so. There you go. Yep. Did you ever hear of a judge called uh, Judge Jimmy Duncan? I think he retired before you ever became a cop. mm Yeah. No. He was less of the old breed. Okay. He didn't allow women to wear pants. Oh, yeah, he's oh, tough. He oh. had tough old bird, lots man. of revolvers around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those days were, uh, they're gone, man. I he mean, was. Sorry, he was you actually I mean? Harris County anyway. So yeah, you yeah, yeah. Run I mean, into him, but well, he was a Harris County judge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met him. <laughs> so how do you like this job? Is it? I love it. Yeah. It's different. 
It's, it's way boring. different. No, it's definitely not boring. Well, that's cool. Yeah, it's, it's similar in the aspect of it not being boring. Yeah. And it's something different. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Um, is what I like about it. You know. And how often do you find yourself reading case law and stuff like that? I have to. I. That's what I like about it. I, I'm constantly having to try to figure things out because of the JP it covers so much. Yeah. So like at the police department. You know, there's the penal code, the code right. of criminal procedure. You know, it's all criminal. Yeah. Well, now it's like, I got to know, I have to know criminal. I have to know civil. civil corporate, I, everything. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's there's a lot more to it. Right. Um, so it keeps me, my will spinning, which yeah. is good. Mm-hmm. You know, idle time's not, not good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I stay busy. Any additional political aspirations? And you may not want to talk about that, but just no, curious. No, man, I, I'm, I'm four years at a time. Yeah, um, I'm run, I'm gonna run again, cool. and uh, we'll see if, what happens after that. But yeah. I don't have any f- future, uh, like go any further or yeah. anywhere else. You know, okay. Uh, at the, at the moment, yeah. You know, that's great. But I, you know, three years ago, I never would have thought, or longer than that. I'm sorry, five or six years ago, I never would have thought I'd been doing this and yeah. not what I was doing. Yeah. You know, so good for you. Yeah. Okay. It's good worked out all right well i just wanted to let you know i don't know if you know but i got cleared with uh montgomery county and and i'm gonna have rowdy hayden in here pretty soon you are as soon as we can book it so the, the and that's awesome. the only thing that's left is he's another really busy guy yeah yeah and uh so i just need to pin him down to a date and actually we were gonna pin down this past week but with the flood and all that he just got busy got again busy, and, yeah yeah so so um for the record i mean you didn't give me questions right I didn't study questions. No. I answered your questions. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you going to send rowdy questions? Or? Actually, I already did because okay. that was part. <laughs> that was what, part of what the county attorneys wanted. They uh, wanted a list of questions that we would either use or not use. Oh, okay. Gotcha. And so, and I even stuck one gotcha. in there. I think it was like question number fifteen or something. I said, "Do you own a boat, beach house?" lake house or other property that i can visit in the future <laughs> so you know or use the yeah future. well out of that so, whole list they didn't x out anything did they no they didn't okay good. they didn't so they're were, they're were cool about we're it. we're not here to ambush people no i get it yeah get that's it. what i told him i said you know in no way shape or form is this a hit yeah. piece or anything yeah. i just you know wanted to talk about it because he's got an interesting career also yeah, yeah you know and politically that dude's a powerhouse oh yeah for sure so, yeah and so i wanted to have a discussion with him about how he felt about his previous campaigns and yeah and how he's done things because i mean i don't know if you know this or not but if you if you just go anywhere in montgomery county and mm-hmm. mention this guy mm-hmm. everybody loves that dude yeah i yeah. mean they love him for sure you know so i mean he could probably run for jesus and get it <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah so yeah. yeah i'm looking forward to having him at the table awesome and uh i was really looking forward to having you at the table too and yeah, we got some good stuff. Yeah, well, good. I'm, so there's, like I said before, there, there's things that, you know, I couldn't get into or I can't get into. But and that's understandable. Yeah, yeah. yeah nobody's trying. to I gave you what I could. Because, well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, it was great. All right, guys. So that's it for Jason Dunn. And uh, if you've subscribed to the channel, we appreciate it. And uh, our goal is a thousand subscribers by end of year. So we're about twenty five percent of the way there, and I know we're going to make it. And so. Uh, For me and Mark Hogan and Jason Dunn, we're going to call it an evening, and we look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. And I guess we're out. That's it.